And that should do it. We got Gibbons Roby Show in the house this morning. Gibbons, good morning and welcome good to the morning. program. Good morning. Yeah, hey, you're I right. I wish I could do it like you, boy. God, dog. Hey, sometimes a little weaker than others. I tell you what, I feel a lot better today. Just to recap on yesterday, we had a great show yesterday. I looked it yes, up, sure and did. I want to come back with some congressional pay if I can get. Uh, let's see if I can get. Yeah, and you might know. Yeah, uh, man, don't, can't get this dog on thing. He's got a call. I bet. <laughs> well, hang on. We got to get the. We got to get this thing up and running here sure. this morning. Um, okay, here we go. On congressional. Perks and pay. Here we go. I, I told you we talked about it yesterday. Here are here is the pay, and they call it pay and pay. It's all over the internet, by the way. You can get this. There's nothing secret uh, about this. I'll come back to the perks in just a minute. But this makes for interesting conversation. Let me back up a little bit and get the pay. Uh, pay correction. No, no, this is not what I want. Uh, anyway, uh, if you just give me a second. Uh, we'll get this thing pulled up. Tell you what, they do, I, I don't know. Here we go. All right, here is what's going on right now. If in January 2013, senators and congressmen make $174,000 a year, that senators and congressmen, they make $174,000 a year. Now, the speaker of the House and the House of Representatives and the majority whip and the majority and the minority whip make more money. They're around 223 uh, per year, John Boehner. But after they've been in so long, like they get a million dollars discretionary, what they call discretionary funds. Okay, some of the benefits are, but their base pay is 174,000 yeah. and 200 plus for the majority whip, the minority whip, and the Speaker of the House yeah, and the Speaker right, of the Senate. Right. Okay. Retirement benefits for members are available through civil service retirement and the newer federal employees retirement system that was enacted in 1986. Their could retirement consists of three major parts, Social Security, a required basic plan to supplement Social Security, and an optional tax-deferred savings plan similar to private 401k plan, okay? Uh, personal staff allowances enable members to hire cl clerical, administrative, legislative, and media support. The member representative MRA budget is authorized by the Committee on the House Administration for each member of Congress in support of the conduct of the official and represent representational duties to the district from which he is elected. For the year 2011, the member's representational allowance ranged from 1.3 to $1.9 million. The Statement of Disbursements, SOD, is a quarterly public report of all receipts and expenditures for the U.S. members of the House, the committees, the leadership, officers, and offices. The House has been required by law to publish that since 1964. God. Representative staff allowances can be used to hire up to 18 permanent and four non-permanent aides divided between the members of Washington and district offices. Up to $75,000 of a representative staff funds can be transferred to his or her official expense accounts for use in other criteria such as computer and related services. The maximum salary allowed House personal staffers in 2005 was $156,000. That's your staff. That's not you. Your staff, I know. That's your staff. Senator's personal staff allowances vary with the size of the member states. Senators may hire as many aides as they wish within their allowance. Typically, this range is between 26 and 60. Depending on the size of the state, the salary level offered to the staffers. The maximum salary allowed by Senate staffers in 2003 was 150000 Okay. About Social Security retirement. Now, the other thing was, and I don't have that hop that site pulled up. They do have, they do pay uh, a third of their medical insurance. Uh -huh. uh, it could be up to half, but most of them pay one third 
of their medical insurance, and it, and it falls uh, not under Blue Cross or anything like that, but it's that federally federal with the with the lowest. Yeah. It, it, they've got the best of the best from what uh, I was. Sure. I don't have it pulled up, and it takes a while to get it up on my iPad. But uh, but they do have the best of the best when it comes to insurance. But they do poke out one third of that premium. Golly. Now guess who pays the other two? Yeah, thirds? I know. Well, what I can't understand is how long does that start? The day they start. That's what the salary That's day is. one. That's starting pay. Yeah, day they're one. all the same. Yeah. Imagine. Yeah. And they yeah. automatically get an increase right. in pay every three years or something? Yeah. They, well, they, yeah, they get they get an annual cost of living. Annual cost yeah, of they, living. They get that, and they also get the fact, like I said, like the Speaker of the House and the Speaker of the Senate get, uh, the, the more they, the longer they've been in yeah, a, right. as, the, as that, in that position, uh -huh. they get discretionary funds. I think John Boehner's got a million dollars in discretionary funds right now uh -huh. that, What's he going to use it for? Yeah. You know, you just think about how much uh, Nancy Pelosi has. I know, exactly. Okay. Here's my point. Uh -huh -huh. Here's what I'm getting to, and then we'll change the subject, unless we get some callers. $174,000 is okay money. How many cents okay. you got? It's not a lot of money when you, when you think about it. Uh -huh. Okay, to, to look at the wealth, my point is to look at the wealth that a lot of these senators and representatives has amassed. That's right. While they've been in Congress, you tell me where that money came yeah, from. Yeah, exactly. It didn't come from $174,000. $174, is a lot of money. I wish I made it. Uh, yeah. Don't get me wrong, okay? Yeah, right. uh -huh. But my point is, in, in their scheme of things, that's not a lot of money. No. They, they amass wealth while they're in Congress. There are a lot of congressional members that are millionaires. Yeah, right. You don't get to be a millionaire by staying 8 to 10 to 15 years in Congress making $174,000 a year. No, that's right, right. You don't amass that kind of fortune. No. Hello? Because $174,000, you got to run a house. That's you right. got kids, you got to educate, travel, you got to send them to school. Travel, well, travel's free. Mm -hmm. Most of their travel's travel free. free huh? But you got to buy food, clothing, and shelter. You know, you got to do all of that. Uh, it's something don't compute. Uh, I don't understand what, why they they are up there for the whole year. And in Louisiana, they go up there for a session, you know, 60 days or something. Of course, they don't get paid that kind of salary. But I think the biggest problem is they stay up there too long. That that old man that was in the wheelchair, what, what is his name? Did he die? He was you talking about Daniel Inou Inouye? I he know, passed away two weeks ago. Yeah. Strom Thurmond? Yeah. I mean, yeah, Strom those guys, Thurman, those guys yeah. stayed, what, 40, 50 years? 40, 50 yeah. years. Imagine, huh? It's, it's not what they, accu well, they accumulate, but it's the power uh -huh. that they can have yeah, with, with, that, kind of, with that kind of longevity. You know, if they, if they had an, another job back home and would come back, and, <laughs> and, uh, but, but it's just amazing that I think the Senate was, was in session only 100 days this year, something like that. Yeah, from, well, <laughs> I, I can pull it up. Anyway, uh, listen to us, four four seven six four zero nine. You can text us at six eight eight two one four seven here at the balcony, six forty a.m. KTIB. <coughs> Go ahead, Gib. I got a call. Okay. <coughs> Are you supposed to talk? Well, I'm supposed. <laughs> I don't have a button that I can oh, press. Oh man, it. I, I can't tell. When John and Sandra Robichaux became grandparents. Yeah, he, he called yesterday and told us about that. Okay. Off, yeah, you know, awesome him right Hang on a second. Okay. Let me grab this. Yeah, it might be Doug. Good morning. You're live, KTIB. If I'm not, Mr. Or 688-214. Scaffolding and labor, it would cost me $10,000. I said, why don't you get a monkey? Train, uh, train a monkey to go up there and that do that. That happens in church? That happens in the book, yeah. Oh, it happens in the book. That's what it happens. I think what's just as important is the Christmas <laughs> Eve when there was no air conditioning. Listen, I was just getting ready to talk uh, about you, uh, too. Uh, uh, I said, I, I was going to talk about you, too. We we're going to talk about the Robo Shows because this has been a Robo Show week. Yeah, this has been a Robo Show week man, uh, ever yeah, since I Christmas can't, Eve. I can't believe that you and you and that man are, are grandparents. I know, when you, last. When you're all married, you're not even 50 years old yet. <laughs> when you mar married me, you were 12, I understand, huh? Oh, yeah, I was 12, or John was 12. <laughs> <laughs> We're old grandparents. Well, that, that's nothing. My John and I became great grandparents last month. Well, no, I know it's not anything, but you know, I don't know if we're going to have any grand, great grandchildren. Yeah. <laughs> um, because we won't live that long. No, that's right. Um, I was just going to rave about y'all. Well, you just did, and the baby's beautiful. Oh, I'm sure. If oh, and we get a new picture welcome. every day. It's a boy. Yes. He looks more great. like John than he looks like you. What? He looks more like John, right? Uh, no. <laughs> nice hair. I, I, our great-grandchild is Jackson. He, he looks just like me. 
Oh, well, that's all right. 82 years ago. <laughs> How you doing, Sandra? Oh, I've been okay. Uh, yeah. Just day by day. That's great. You, but you, going to Abby, going to Lafayette on oh. Christmas uh -huh. Eve uh -huh. was, you know, Andrew called at one at uh, one fifteen in the morning and uh -huh. said, you know, the baby's going to come today, and so yeah. James drove us, and uh, we got there like at eleven twenty, and the baby was born at fifteen to twelve or something uh -huh. like that. So we were very glad to be there. <laughs> That's well, wonderful. let me hear from you, okay? Okay. Bye. I wanted to tell you one thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. I wanted to tell uh, the, the, the audience about the Ruby Show wedding Saturday oh, yes, morning. I heard about it. Do you know, uh, I've been paying, I've paid for many weddings. i paid for 500 weddings. Uh-huh. And they never invited me on their honeymoon. Mm -hmm. I tell everybody that I'm, a th I'm responsible for 1,000 babies. They never invite me on their honeymoon. That's well, you know, funny. three in the bed is kind of... <laughs> kind of crowd. <laughs> but b before Kristen came down the aisle, Michael and Betsy and Jackson came down the aisle. Michael oh. was carrying a baby down the aisle at a wedding. Oh. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. And, a, and the choir was upstairs and, and, and Carol sang Oh Holy Night. Oh, yeah. It was magnificent. The whole thing was magnificent. Newly married Carol. And some, some old man got up there at, at communion time and played the album in my on the piano. I don't know who that old man was. You can still play? Yeah, <laughs> I practiced for a month. I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, Father Jay was fantastic, and it, uh, it lasted only. You can still climb up there. Yeah, I saw him by the hardest. Uh, you have I, to wear small shoes. Uh, no. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, don't ask how old I am either. I know how old you are. I know. Quit saying that, Sandra. I was going to tell him about you when you came up to the choir off. Oh. When you contacted me, was it in the 70s? Well, I sang a wedding in 1970. Yeah. And you, you didn't, I don't, I guess you asked me if I wanted to be the choir Yeah, director. right. That's but the then I got married in 70, uh -huh. so we were going till 71. Yeah, right. So it must have been 71. I never can remember exactly when 71. it was. 71. But I was in my young days. Uh, I know. I could conquer anything. I, I got you to come up there. That's right. That's yeah, so your fault. That, it's, it's you who introduced me to Thibodeau. Mm, that's right. Oh, yeah. Lord. <laughs> we all live in a beautiful home right in the middle of the, uh, next to that fabulous university. Yes, it's a fabulous uh, view. It's so good to hear from you, and thanks for a beautiful year, and thanks for you and John. Uh, I think John is so highly respected at E.D. White, and I hope he's feeling better here. He had a rough year, I know. Well, you but know, uh, someone said after the hurricane that they must have given us power first because Don Lyo lives on this street. Yeah. And John says, no, they gave it to us because John Robichaud lives on this street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, over and out. Have a good day. Bye. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, see, they're, they're a wonderful couple. How old are you, Gibbons? Huh? 82, man. Cool. You don't believe that, huh? You got to be at least 90, huh? <laughs> You make fun. I, of, you, you make me 200 years old sometimes. Well, you span three now, talking centuries. About, talking about birthdays, it, when Monday was the anniversary of KTIB, 60 years. What, 60? I thought it was like 52 or 53. No, 60? Right here. Right wow. Here. The, uh, William Taylor, who knows everything about everything, said in the original station, Fred Block, Ed Jackson, and Sam Lawrenson, December 24th, 1953. Man, Gene Richard wasn't even born yet. 19 what? <laughs> 53. Shoot, man, 53, I was seven years old. I was half grown no, up. Cool, cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, in the last, I was half grown you, up. You were born in the last century? Absolutely. Uh, Way in the last but century. But you know that for, it, was, it was originally 6.30 a.m. The studio was on the top floor where the library is now, you know. That was where the Comet, Lafouche Comet building was. For seven years, they were upstairs there. You, you were just a little boy. The original tower was off of Shriver Highway, had an output of 500 right. watts, a date of 1,000 watts. <laughs> the original station manager was Arthur Bachman. Bachman, did you ever know him? Who? Arthur Bachman. We, and, uh, that was 60 years ago? I was mm. six years old. I yeah. didn't know anybody then. <laughs> All you knew was where, where the bathroom was, where, right. the, where the refrigerator and was. And where the table <laughs> was to eat. <laughs> it's still that way, huh? That's right. <laughs> it ain't a whole lot changed, Gibbons. <laughs> Leroy Martin started doing the shows a, a couple of days after that. Imagine, in 19, December 31st, Leroy Martin came on a state of Kate Abbey in 1983. You know what I remember? Of course, I wasn't, I wasn't a radio, f I, I, f I still can't say, affiant. Uh, how do you say, I don't even know how to say I can't ever remember. Anyway, I wasn't a radio geek back then. Okay, uh -huh. I didn't know a lot about radio. No. 
but I remember several things about KTIB. One was the Leroy Martin show. Mm-hmm. Two was Swap Shop. Yeah, Swap Shop. Remember Swap Shop? Yeah, sure. And three was, well, four or five things. Three mm-hmm. was the Leonard J. Toops Insurance Agency put on the 12 o'clock news because at my house you listen to the 12 o'clock news yeah, on KTIB. Right. That's right. what everybody did. Everybody did. And the radio in French, in, I mean the rosary in French in the morning. I know. That's right. Isn't that amazing? I think it was at 5, 5.30, something like that, maybe even 4.30. But those are the things I remember about uh-huh. KTIB. We have a great memory for a young man. Uh, Absolutely. I, I, I'm still in pretty good shape memory-wise. The rest of me is falling yeah. apart. But. And, uh, and, and in, in 1954, they brought in the first ever air female employee, Marie Bajeron. 1954. She, she worked for both KTIB and KTIB for 45 years. She was an amazing woman, I'll tell you. She was like the, the, uh, the, the anchor, you know? Right. Back then, I mean, it was, uh, and, and, you know, back then they had, they had news people. I mean, radio yeah. stations back then did yeah. everything, you know. Uh-huh. They, the KTIB was the only thing around here. People, not, uh, everybody had a radio. Not yeah. everybody had TV exactly. back then. Oh, that's right. Oh, people lived to the radio. That's right. And uh-huh. TV wasn't on uh, all day. Mm-hmm. You know, it would come on in the morning, yeah. go off at night. And uh, newscasts were rare then. So, yeah, the radio stations carried the brunt of, mm-hmm. of uh, the broadcast. That's right. KTIB brought a license in uh, 3,000 watt signal. Mr. Ray, Say, Ray Sadie, mm-hmm. uh, Mr. Sadie and his group brought KTIB in 1973, and the lo- rules only allow for a group to own up to two radio stations in one market. And they that's all to, they could do. They went to Jericho Cell and, and moved the station to another part of Thibodeau. That's when they went. That's to what the, the first federal. That's right. The old first federal building. Hold on, let me grab this call. Good morning, you're live, KTIB. Good morning, Mr. R and Mr. R. Good morning, Miss Cheryl. How are you le- doing today? Great. That's a great letter, huh? The R. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ronald Listen, Reagan. I, I'm listening to you talking about KTIB here now. Yeah. And I asked you already a while back how long you've been doing uh, dialogue, and you said you didn't quite remember. <laughs> And you, you're trying to recollect things about the radio station before you got into radio. I remember there was, if I remember correctly, that is, there was a lady that used to do dialogue years yeah, ago. Yeah, Marie Bajron. Uh-huh. Miss Bajron. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, you didn't absolutely. mention her, so I was wondering if you remembered who she was, because I remember her. I just re- didn't remember her name. But she did dialogue for a long time. Oh, absolutely. I know her. I knew her well. She was a great yeah. friend of mine, so her and her husband yeah. were, were great great friends of mine and uh, yeah. in fact her husband and I worked together I've uh, been the car business for a while and uh, yeah she was man she was like a pioneer you know yeah that's why I remember I remember her not not remembering her name but remembering that it was a lady that did it because yeah you're uh, right I I was on her program once or twice in the I don't know uh, late 80s early 90s somewhere around there for the same reason that I'm on your show now. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the better Some things don't change, huh? And you notice we don't ask your age either. Oh, no, uh. I'm not. Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any idea how old Gene Richard is, but he keeps telling hey, you know how old I am. I'm 66. Everybody knows. There ain't no secret. It ain't but a number. You ought to retire, man. You know, what you want to beat around the bush for? He, he, said I, he said I was born in 1890, you know. You were. <laughs> look at you. you. You're decrepit. That's how great I look. No, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Gibbons, well, and, Gibbons and I got a face for radio. Yeah. I, I'm going to say like my mom once, once said, uh, with age comes wisdom. Uh-huh. Amen, baby. And every wrinkle that she had on her face, she says she earned it. So I yep. guess I'll have to say the same thing. <laughs> That's beautiful. You, That's beautiful. you know, you are correct, and I'm going to add one more word to that. With age comes humility. That's right. That's correct. Oh, my oh, goodness. Yeah, right. You have to Absolutely. be humble. Man, oh, so, man. I'm 63 years old. I'll be 64 next August. Oh, she oh. barely out of diapers. Man, you uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah huh? right. According to Gene Richard. Uh, behind you. Shoes, man. You just seen your little young girl. <laughs> I feel that way sometimes. There but you not go. A whole lot. There you go. Not 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 often, but sometimes my my well, y'all know that too. Y'all heart probably feels a heck of a lot younger than what your body is. Oh, no question about it. My mind feels great. It's it's the <laughs> but I get reminded every morning when I get out of bed. The first few steps. Ay, 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 that'll bring you back to reality. You know, <laughs> I, I huh? know the feeling. I oh, the feeling. my goodness. Oh, you old people, y'all are something. Yeah, buddy. 
but um, I just wanted to call in, in uh, since y'all were talking about the radio station, to see if y'all could recall her, yeah. her name, because she was a great lady. She too. was. You better believe it, Miss um, Cheryl. Um, I've, been, I've been listening to the to, to KTIB since the early 70s when, uh -huh. I, when I got married and moved out of my parents' home. Uh-huh. So it's been a long time. Yeah. And actually, even before that, because they used to listen. My parents did listen to the Leroy Martin show way back when, too. Yeah. I remember yeah, that. that. Was, you know, it, it, as I said, w when you think of the, uh, the role that, that radio stations played back then, Absolutely. I mean, it was the Internet of today. Exactly. You know, that's what it was. I mean, and exactly. especially... Uh, you know, it, Gibbons was said, if you notice, they, they limited the radio stations. Only one person, one person could not own more than two stations. Today, yeah, right. there are yeah. conglomerates. Uh -huh, you right. know, but uh, back then, I mean, it was, it was the place to go to get information. Correct. You know. Correct. That's correct. In a timely manner. You said a full, you say a full mouth when you said it, it was the internet of today. Yeah, it is. I mean, it correct. was. You know, and that's that's, yep. uh, and, and and served a. KTIB served a, a very, very useful purpose uh, in this whole area. You know, mm -hmm. the weather, the early morning weather for the farmers, uh, the, the hurricane coverage, the funeral, the uh, yeah, obituaries, right. Right. The, the 12 o'clock news, the 5 or 6 o'clock in the so morning forth. news. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how people got information. Exactly. You know? Now, what, whatever happened to, uh, to Miss Marie? She died yeah, she, two or three years yeah, ago. Yeah, right? not long ago. She was at St. Joe's um, Manor. Yeah. I, I went there one time when the Shangri-La men were tape recorder. Remember Jean? Yeah. And I, and I interviewed her, and we paid over, over Jean's show. But oh, that, that's I, I, hadn't, I hadn't heard about her that's, death. That's two or three years ago, I think. Yeah. Mm. Well, did y'all have a nice Christmas? Yeah. Oh, oh absolutely. Absolutely. That's good. That's yeah, good. We were so lucky that the weather, the weather was bad away north of us and everything, but man, Mississippi and them got it so bad, and even, even right now in the northeast, it's terrible. Yeah. It was yeah. a storm that started in California a week ago and came across and went north of us. We had a little rain sun Christmas afternoon, but look what it did to, to Mississippi and right oh, on yeah. up there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, look, I'm going to let you all yeah, get okay. on with the program. And, uh, Mr. Richard, I'm hopefully going to see you sometimes at the station in February. You holler, baby. Give you some updates on what's going on. And um, I have one quick question for you. Do, you. do you want me to let you know when our January meeting is going to be? Yes. Okay, good. I'll do that. Yeah, please. All right. Y'all have a I wonderful I want to get the day. New Year off to a good start. I'm going to make some commitments to some meetings that I hadn't been attending in the past. Well, I understand you're crook. busy, but I hope you can in the future join us. Thank you, baby. All right. All right. Later. Bye-bye. Let, Bye. let me read this paragraph to you. One of the most fun-filled broadcasters was Les Domang. Oh, who, yeah. Who hosted the long-running swap shop, which usually aired at 10 a.m. weekdays, allowing for callers to sell items on the air for 30 minutes a day. One story goes that when a lady called saying she had a dog available for stud service, <laughs> Les replied, well, ma'am, is it a male or female? <laughs> <laughs> For stud service. God, dog, it ain't going to take a let me grab this yeah. Good morning. You're live, KTIB. KTIB has always been a premier means of Amen. communication and the distribution of information. Yep. And I certainly hope that it continues to be during times of storms and et cetera. Yeah, right. One of the vignettes I had is at the very inception of KTIB, it was difficult to hire announcers that were willing to work very early morning or at unusual times, particularly on Sundays, and I was listening to the radio, and this guy who was announcing gradually diminished his voice to the point where you knew there was something wrong. Well, he was very intoxicated, and I wanted to inform oh, someone who had control of this guy because he was just going off the edge of the cliff. <laughs> I don't remember that. It wasn't me. You wasn't don't you? remember that one. It wasn't Gene, huh? Oh, it wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, I called everyone who had any connection with the radio station. Uh -huh. Finally, couldn't get couldn't get anyone, except I finally got Mr. Fred Block on the phone, and I told him about it, and I subsequently learned that no one had a key to get into KTIB except the announcer. He was, and he was locked in all by himself. Locked in, inebriated to the point of <laughs> incoherence. God bless him. 
Well, I just wanted to mention that little bit, little tidbit to you. Did you ever find out who it was? Oh, you, you'd rather not say? Well, I, I knew who it was, but okay. I, did, I don't remember his name. I got you. Okay. He was one of those transient announcers. You know, he, they, they bounced around in those days because <laughs> they hardly got paid anything. Yeah. And then uh, who wants to work at that time in the morning? You, you, you're especially right on a Sunday morning. You are correct. Just hey. Gene. Gene will do it five days a week. That's you right. got it, buddy. Okay. All right. Thank you. But I guy thought that KTIB may keep time in a bottle. You're right. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know who that was. I never heard that story. Here's something. KTIB had different formats from 53 to 73. Gospel popular tunes to rock and roll. Long-standing success as a country music station from 73 to 89. But one of the longest-running KTIB shows aired on Sunday mornings called the Sensational Southern Tones. Remember that? Who provided gospel music to listeners for over four decades. Goodness sake. The Southern Tones? The Sensational Southern Tones, yeah. On Sunday morning. I don't remember that. And, of course, uh, that's too many. But, but and Ray Sadie and Jim Swallow did the broadcast during, during uh, Kate Tabby covered Hurricane Betsy. Where were you, Gene? Were you born yet? Yeah. <laughs> Was I born? Let me tell you, I spent Betsy helping out at Thibodeau Lower Elm, one of them schools, uh -huh. and the basement flooded. Yeah, yeah I remember Betsy oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. The station was able to stay on the air by broadcasting from a housing at the transmitter site using a microphone from a cassette player and plugging into the transmitter. The Shreer Tower site stayed up there, and that's where Ray Sadie and uh, Jim Schwaller went and stayed there for, during the hurricane. Betsy was a whopper boy. Oh, yeah, Betsy uh, was tough. You and I were just young and very young. I was. Sure. You weren't. <laughs> you way older than me, Gibbon. Yeah. Don't, even, don't even get close to that. <laughs> Don't they were the only there. radio station in South Louisiana that was on the air, and that's due to the fact that the generator was installed two weeks, two weeks prior, prior said, to right before, uh -huh. the storm. And, Gene, you've been here since 2001. 2001? So how many years? 11, 12? 11. 11. You replaced David Salzman. <laughs> and he left in 2001? And we five, Keep track of that, Linda, because I should have helped week. you. Huh? How many weeks in a year? 52. Times and, five. And you see, Jean came here temporarily. That's right. <laughs> She's still looking for my replacement. Ain't nobody stupid enough to take it. That's the only reason I'm still here. Uh, I ain't no. good. I'm the only one available. And, exactly. You're right. <laughs> and he finally gave you age. You finally know what's going on. But you'd be surprised how many people listen to you now. Be careful what you say. Oh, I know. You, let mm. me tell you, you never know, man. That's right. You know, you, you're right. This listening audience is vast. You know, mm. every now and then I get a call from Dan Bourne and uh, my old classmate in yeah. Baton Rouge. I mean, he listens regular. There's people in Lafayette that call. There's people in Opelousas. Yeah. Hey, listeners, just want to let you know, I got uh, the keyboard fixed. We're up and streaming. So you can tune us in at www.tibetonline.com. Got that sucker fixed. 688-2147. You can text me or you can call us at 447-6409. 447-6409 here at the balcony. OD640 KTIB. Long time ago, Gib. Yeah. You know? I got a birthday. Who's yours? Beth Robichaud Hodnett. Wow. My, you know Neil yes, Malcolm, huh? And, and Beth, Beth Hodnett. And happy birthday, Beth. Um, but I also, I wanted to say that uh, at, at the wedding, uh, oh, and I told you all that already, huh? Yeah. It, w it was a beautiful day. Man, you got a little problem with your memory there, Gil? No, I don't remember anything. Yeah, you but do. I, I you got CRM, can't know, remember much. I know it's as bad as me. I know the right. score of the Saints game for Sunday, 35-17. That's what you say it's going to be. I'm going to write that down. Hey, yeah. listeners, we got to take a short break. We're just clowning around this morning. It's the, the, uh, the, the kind of like the low days during the holidays. Hey, pour yourself a cup of coffee. We'll be right back here at OD640. Kate, okay, just have some fun. You know, the, one of the other guys was um, Roy Pugh. Roy Pugh, yeah. Yeah, he moved to Where, Florida. Linda? Linda might know. Linda, uh, that was right at the end. Of, right at His end, I think, was right at the beginning uh, uh, of Linda's area. I don't know. Yeah, here she comes. Um, uh, he moved to Florida. You're kidding. Wow. Um, if I'm not mistaken, last time we talked to him, he was in Laplace. Laplace? Yeah, but I think he was very ill, and I think he passed away. Wow, okay. Oh, I think so, so too. I need to check that. Now that you say that, yeah. Yeah, he was kind of like the... Like last year. Yeah, oh, you know, I think you... 
I think I remember seeing something, or maybe you and I spoke about it. Oh, where's William? Yeah, hang on a second. Let me grab this call. Good morning. You're live, KTIB. Hey, it's me again. Hey. <laughs> Y'all are jogging my memory for a, a lot of things in the past here. I, I remember another name. I remember Mr. Pugh. Right, Roy Pugh. Sweet. And how about uh, Jimmy Cole? Yeah. Jimmy Cole. Yeah, I remember that name, yeah. Hey, that's before my time of listening. Miss Linda, does, does she remember him? I, I think that. that was probably before her time. I, I don't think he was hit that long, huh? You know, we were talking, somebody was talking about that the last time. That was Jimmy Cole. I, men I mentioned him to you before. Yeah, right? you're right. And past, somebody called I in and said, I think he was like in the, er it was in the it 50s. It was in the early 50s. Yeah, the, he had to been right after yeah. the station came on the 50s, air. 50s, I think. That's right. Yeah, I've been early 50s, since but he was, still, he was still there in the early 70s because I used to, he, uh, I went to the station a, cu a couple of times for some, uh, he donated, uh, the station donated door prizes for our convention. <laughs> You know, I've heard, I don't know him, I don't remember him or know him at all, but I hear, I hear several people, uh, I remember several people talking about him. Was he an announcer? He was, he was an yeah. on-air guy? Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. I don't remember, that's before my time. Linda says before her time, too, so. Okay. Well, he, <laughs> yeah. was, he was good, too, and he moved to Lafayette. I think that's where his family's from. Okay. Yep. I remember the Good name. Good deal. Sure Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you bye -bye. You know, back then, too, all of those guys and gals, uh, they, they had th these golden oh. voices. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. They were just like right. voices like for radio. You, no, you no. Got the, you got the radio. Yeah, right. That'd oh, be the day man. when you... Good morning. You're live, Good morning, KT. Mr. Good morning, Doug. How are you? Hey, I'm great. Who you got today? A Gibbons Roby Show. A Gibbons Roby Show? Yeah, <laughs> we talk about a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> nothing. You, you just got up? I've been up. Oh. Come on, man. I was just coming from the front of the house. Okay. So oh. I was just eating breakfast and giving me some coffee. You off today? Yeah. Oh, you lucky dog. Yeah, we off today. All right. All that sleeping okay. late. Yeah, good for you. Okay. Okay, dog. Happy, you happy have a good day. Dog. Enjoy your time off. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Guy. I was wondering why he hadn't called earlier, you know. Uh, he had taught off the day. Yeah, huh? those guys and gals. You know, it was just a... And I, I, it was just a different era, I know, yeah. you know, in a different time. And as mm -hmm. I said, in, in radio plays a different, it's just radio today plays a different role. Yeah, right. You know, than it did back then. But back then, it, Mr. Hoffman said it best. It was a great source yeah. of information. Mm -hmm. in, and because, the, you know, the newspapers were sporadic and uh, that was the only yeah. people look for this. That's right. Same time every day, especially the farmers. They were asking about when Marie passed away. She passed away on November 15th, 2009. Three years ago, yeah. Just had just had an anniversary. Hang on a second. Let me grab this call. Good morning. You're live, KTIB. Good morning, handsome. How you doing this morning? Hey, good morning. Yeah, listen. Uh, the, just to make a little clarification, when y'all talked about Roy Pugh, yeah, uh, Roy's actually uh, doing well. He's in Navarre Beach, Florida. Uh, he's okay. All and right. I, did, uh, I think Linda was mixing him up with Mr. Roy Vicknair. Roy Vicknair, you right. You you are correct. Doggone it. You're correct. Oh, and that's right. what I said. Where's William? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, yeah, but, yeah, Mr. Uh, Roy's been under the weather for the past couple of years or Roy so. Roy Vicknair. And, uh, yeah, he was involved with either this station or KHOM for a total of 36 years. I know. And uh, the gentleman who called earlier about the uh, drinking announcer, uh, Marie and uh, Ray Sadie mentioned that story when Marie retired. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that incident occurred in 1962. And that the follow-up on the story... I remember them telling me that that gentleman did eventually unlock the what the entrance door to the first federal bank building, but before other employees got there to clean up the mess, the guy was actually standing on the sidewalk, flagging people down, wanting to know if they wanted to buy the station's equipment. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so yeah, it, it was a very eventful story uh, when they told it, but that was back in '62. We're trying to sell the station, huh? That's it. Right. Well, piece by piece. Hey, anyway. <laughs> <Not me. clears throat> whatever works. Yeah. Well, y'all have a Thank good Thank you, day. William. All right. Bye-bye. Right. That was fabulous. Lots of history, my boy. Lots of history. We live as old as, as you have, Gibbons. Well, I mean, you know. Yeah, we uh, <clears throat> hey, Amen. She's got something else. Wait, go ahead. <laughs> if they're really, you know, people are interested in the history of KTIB, they can go to www.ktibmemories.com. And William has spent hours and hours and hours and probably years putting that website together. Uh -huh. 
and it's got all the history. It's got interviews with Marie. It's got Ray Sadie. It's got hey, Roy Pugh. Amazing. It's got Roy Vickner. Uh-huh. Um, Gene, Gene Richard. Richard. It, it's just got everything you can imagine on it. It's got old liners. It's got old commercials. Um, it's a tremendous history site. Yeah. And yes, KTIB did sign on the air Christmas Eve, 1953. That's a long time ago. Why Christmas 59 Eve? 59 years. I don't know. It was a gift to, to Thibodeau of communications, yeah. they had said. Okay, uh, because, man, that, that's an odd, you know, nobody would be listening on, of course, I don't know what Oh, they, yeah, they would. I'm sure on it was Christmas publicized. Eve? Yeah, well, I guess oh, you're yeah. right. I think I said that to you. It's pretty awesome. I said that to you, yeah. That's from William Taylor. No, I didn't say that. Katie, Katie, 60 years. Yeah, uh-huh. it's amazing. Christmas, that's a, that, uh, to me it just sounds odd, but I mean, who knows what was going on in 1952. That's right. You know, I mean, I was playing with my, I was getting an apple and an orange, and I had one good toy for Christmas. And I was in I Okinawa. You, for the, you went Okinawa? Okinawa, and I will remember two words, Benjo and Kasaga. <laughs> don't say what that means. Don't put that out on the air. I don't want to know. <laughs> Hang on a second. Let me grab this call. Good morning. You're live, KTIB. Gee, way back, do you remember David and Ivan Bajeron? Well, I guess so. We graduated together, all of us. Didn't his daddy work at KTIB? Bajeron? Yeah. No, wasn't uh, his daddy an insurance salesman? Yeah, but I, I think he had something to do with KTIB. I don't know if he... Really? Was, I'm not sure. I, I was just... Wait but, a minute. I do well, remember that when I was probably five years old or something like well, that. Well, Ken de Marie, huh? When Ken de Marie. No. No. Yeah, they lived in Shriver. Uh, right? The what? They lived in Shriver. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but they, I remember they used to live in North Tibble by us. Oh, really? I, I thought we were cover, cousins until we were about five years, six years <laughs> old. <laughs> okay, Jim. I understand. Thank you. Day. You too. Bye-bye. I don't remember. I remember David. In fact, David, David listeners, for all of, all of you... Uh, who was I with? Warren Broussard at a wedding two weeks ago. David and Warren are getting a band. They're getting a band, uh, an orchestra together again, and they're playing music for free uh, on, on like two or three times, a couple of times a month or something like that. I'll try to find out the story. Hang on a second. Let me grab this call. Good morning. Oh, what did I do? Good morning. Uh, disconnected somebody here. Give us a call back. 447-6409. I'll, I'll put this thing on hold. Hang on a second. Let me grab it again. Good morning. You're live, KTIB. Hey, I'm not the one you disconnected, but I'm, I came in on the end of the conversation. Y'all talking about the website. What is the name of the website that Billy Taylor and them put up? Linda, what's the name? www.ktibmemories.com, Linda? Yes www.ktibmemories.com. Yeah. Okay, all right. All right. Sounds William, interesting. Bye-bye. Thanks. William right. Taylor is amazing. He, he, Amen. He has all that information. Isn't that amazing? He is amazing. Oh, absolutely. He's, he knows yeah. every birthday in the Saints organization. They ought to hire him to go over there. He could Saints. be a historian. Absolutely. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Yeah. Br- we won't Real. bring him up next month if I'm still here. That's that St. Charles breeding, I think. What do you think, yeah, Jim? I have no clue. You have no clue? Uh, uh, oh, I think so. Uh, if it is, I sure didn't get some of them jeans. It's I guarantee the water you that. that we drink in St. Charles. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Y'all have a good right, day. By the Bye-bye. way, I do have a birthday. It's Sunday, and that's Mikey Gautier Reese. Got it. Michael Gautier Reese. Mikey, M I K I. Mikey. Got Mikey. it. Yeah. Thank you. All that's, right, Kate. Okay. Gene, right. before we shut down, I want to uh, I want to tell you where Thibodeau came from. The great popularity of the personal name Theobald. T-H-E-O-B-A-L-D made it almost inevitable that it would eventually develop into a hereditary surname of the patriotic variety. And it came, came uh, t- Thibodeau, Thibodeau, t- t- it started at Thibodeau, you see? And then it ended up at Thibodeau, Thibodeau, Thibodeau. <laughs> and eventually T-H-I-B-O-D-A-U-X. So, yeah, Thibodeau. Because, because um, uh, the dialect and the language differences led to the variety of spellings. And uh, the, the X wasn't added for a long time, you see? It has Tibodo here with the A-U-D-E-A-U and then T-H-I-B-O-D-E-A-U without the X. But that came in later. Got it. What a great city. You got it. You got it. It's been a great run. Gibbons Roby Show, thanks for being with us this morning. Congrats Listeners, thank you.